it's, it's very good to be here. Uh, when, I, when I first heard that, you know, IMT is having the aesthetics and the topic was uh, where magic happens, I just hope that they'll not have this red dot because magic does not happen when you're constrained. Magic happens here. When you move out of that red box, because that's what happened with me, right? When you're constrained with a red dot, magic does not happen. Uh, okay, so going on to going on to my talk, um, I gave my first talk when I was when I was 20, when 20 or 21, when I when I was writing my first book, and I've been described by a lot of different things. Um, and TEDx says that you know when you when you start your talk, you have to describe yourself. So at 21, I was described as an engineering graduate. At 22, I was described as a design engineer. At 24, I was described as a management student. At 25, I was described as someone who was working at a credit card company. At 26, I was described as someone who's a publisher and an entrepreneur. At 27, I was described as a full-time novelist. At 29, I was described as uh, a screenwriter. But when you describe yourself, you do not describe yourself by the things that you're really average at. And I was really average at all these things. You know, being a student, being an entrepreneur, and being all these things. I was really, I was really average at all these things. What I was really good at was reading books. So I would like to introduce myself as Durjoy Datta, the first of his name. And he's a really good reader. I describe myself as someone who has read over a thousand books and someone who can name the best-selling authors of, of all countries possible. So I describe myself as a reader. So now that we have got the introduction out of the way, I would uh, like to go on to the topic of my talk, which is, we are all Hermione Granger. I do not know how many of you are fans of Harry Potter, how many of you have read the books, or how many of you have seen the movies. But if you haven't, the first order of business is go back home and watch the, watch the movies. Please do it, please read the books. Harry, uh, Hermione Granger is one of my favorite characters, and not without reason. She is intelligent, she's ambitious, and she's like a really clever muggle. She does not have magic, but she grew on to be one of the most powerful witches in Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. And what I constantly think about is, what if she had not discovered that her real true calling was to become a witch. What if she had not discovered that she was born to be a witch, that she was born to make potions and put out spells? What if she had not discovered that? And everyone in this room should, should relate to Hermione Granger because all, we, we are all intelligent, we are, we, 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 are, we are all reasonably ambitious. So I've constantly thought that Aren't we all looking for our Hogwarts, you know, going to a place where we can, we can truly be ourselves? So my talk is going to be about how I found my Hogwarts. So I was, uh, I was born in a, in a middle-class family in Delhi, and all my relatives were engineers, and it's a, it's a solid career choice. So I grew up wanting to be an engineer. I, I, I so badly wanted to be an engineer that I wasted a year and I gave an entrance examination twice to get the college that I really wanted to go to and get the stream that I really wanted to do. Once I got to that engineering college, I would not say that I really loved it, but I did not hate it. I could have done it for the next 30 years if the need, if the need ar arose. Uh, but what I was also doing on the side was I was writing a blog because my time in engineering college was very interesting. I made a lot of new friends, had a lot of new experiences, and I, wrote, I, and I, and I started writing this blog. And I had a readership of 40, 50 people who told me that, why don't you start writing a book? I think they were being polite, but I took it very seriously. I thought they were very serious. They thought that I was writing well. And I wrote this book, which sold a few thousand copies in the first year, and I thought that, you know, I'm successful, but you know, as, as we are all um, at 21, I thought that this is not something to be taken seriously, that this is a lucky strike, this is a flash in the pan, it's not going to sustain. I thought that you know, writing is, is something that I can always do on the side, but my career is my engineering and something that I do beyond it. So what I did was I, I I, I gave my management entrance examination. I, I homed in on a college that I really wanted to go to and a course that I really wanted to do. 
and I wasted another year. I gave that entrance examination for two years and I got through that college. And again, the same cycle repeated. I did not love it, but also I did not hate it. I could have done it for the next 30 years. But what happened around, uh, on the side was that my experience at my MBA college was, was brilliant. I made a lot of new friends, had a lot of new experiences. I loved my time there. And I wrote three books on it. What happened after my uh, management college is that I was one of the first guys to get placed. I had a job which put me in the fast track uh, part to senior management. I was paid a lot of money and the work hours weren't crazy. I was recognized as one of the lead performers in the company. So I thought that this is what my life is going to be. And I thought that this is brilliant, man. I have, I've really found my calling in life. This is what I'm going to do. But on the side, I had written five books. So my publishers called me and said, I think your calling is writing. This is what you should do. You know, writing is what you should do for the rest of your life because really, you're really good at it. But what happened was that uh, because I'm conditioned to have a stable career, I thought that because I had no role models, uh, you know, when it came to writing, I thought that you know, I'll continue with my job and I'll, start write, I'll continue writing on my side. I did not take them seriously, but they were really persistent. If you have watched Harry Potter, you'll know that, you know, they keep sending these owls. If you don't accept their message that you're invited to Hogwarts as a student, they'll keep sending your, your owls over and over again. So these publishers were my owls. They told me that you have to write. This is, this is, this is what you're born to do. I ignored them for a really long time, but then I had to bow down and said, okay, fine, I'll, I'll, I'll do what you ask me to do. And I left my job. And my parents, my friends, and everybody around me told me that, you know, this is not a very wise decision, that you studied for six years, you worked at two companies, why are you leaving everything to just write? You know, this is, this is a stupid decision. But then I was being, being very selfish, and I thought that, you know, this is something that's going to be fun, why not try it? So I left my job and I went into writing. Have you ever felt like, you know, there's, there's this best friend of yours and you do not know but you're in love with that best friend? That is something that happened with me when I started my own publishing house. I thought that I'll read books, I'll select books and I'll publish them. That is, that is what I did after I left my management job. But what I realized at that point in time that I was in love with reading books. I was obsessed with books ever since I was a child, so much so that I remember when I was in 8th standard and our English course changed, a lot of students started scoring really low. So what our teachers did was that you could read supplementary books and you could get extra marks. I had read so many books in that time period that I scored more than 100%. So my, so my report card says that I scored 116% out of 100. That's, that's, that's how much I loved books. So, you know, when, when, I, when I started this publishing house, it was like I had found my one true love in my life. That, you know, I would not need anything else in my life other than books. That was a revelation for me. So imagine my frustration when the company shut down in two years. I was like, now I'm, it, it was like a part of me died. I was like, I will not get to read books. I had found love after I was, at the point that I was 25 years of age, and I was like, you know, if books, if you remove books from my life, I'm not going to, I, there, there's nothing, there's no meaning to my life. So what I did was, uh, I was, I was depressed for, a year, for like a good few months, and then I found television writing. Now television writing is just like another job. You are slave to your broadcasters, you're slave to your producers, you're slave to the actors. You're slave to your ratings. It was just another job. Some days are good, some days are bad. But what I realized is that I was sad for a month, but I wasn't sad after that. I was very happy still, and I realized that, just like love, you aren't unhappy because it ended. You're happy that it happened. I was very happy that I found my one true love in books, that reading books gave me the kind of joy that nothing, nothing else in the world ever gave me. It was 100% pure joy. I hadn't realized it when I was growing up, but if, if and when I was ever sad as, as an engineering student, as a management student, as working 
in different companies i would come back home and i would i would have a book i would never sleep unhappy because i would read a book i would be always happy reading that book and i would go go back to bed being being extremely happy so i found my one true love and that's that's what gave me a lot of happiness you know and it only happened because my parents they they bengal i've i've grown up in a, a bengali household in india and you know what happens in bengali households is that when you grow up you you go to your temple and you see pictures of gods you see pictures of your ancestors and there's a picture that you don't recognize when you're growing up that's a picture of an author called rabindranath tagore so you grow up in a household where an author is respected so much that he has a place right next to the gods so i grew up in this household where authors were respected so much and so when i became an author and when i professed my love towards book it was accepted you know it's it's wholly acceptable that in a bengali household a man would fall more in love with books than his own than than his own wife so so I, so i was very lucky when i when i when i found that my one true love in my life was books so that's what happened when you know even if my company shut down i was very happy that that uh, books is where i found refuge to you know the, it was my warm cozy place even if i had a bad thing at work if i if i did not manage to stri strike up a rap again with my with my seniors i could always go back to books i would i could always be happy at the end of the day and and it only happened because i opened myself up to experiences when i was a little child you know my parents pushed me into reading when i was really young and i'm very sure that i would have resisted uh the first book when they would have given my first book i would have said that you know i'm not going to read this book because this is not going to come in exams but i read that book because they would have insisted i i would not have said no for a really long time i accepted that new experience and that's why i found my one true love so my little advice to you guys is that don't be defined by the career you are in don't be defined by the by the kind of academic qualifications that you have be defined by what you really love that's why i feel very odd when people define me by my academic academic qualification i feel very odd when they say that he is a best selling author because i'm none of that how i like to define myself is that i am durga data i've read a thousand books and i am a reader and i really like to do it because my search ended at that point in time i did not i did not have the struggle that how do i define myself because i'm not i don't consider myself one of the best writers i don't consider myself as one of the best students but i do consider myself as one of the best readers there have there has ever been and now thousand books later i can say that i am durga data the reader so that is what you have to look 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 out for you have to find that one thing that you really really like to do you have to find your hogwarts you know before concluding my talk i i I'll, i'll talk about another character from from hogwarts we talked about hermione who's brilliant who's clever who's ambitious who's everything but there's another character who's called ron weasley now ron weasley wasn't a great wizard he wasn't even a good one he was mostly he was stupid you know but even his safe place was hogwarts you know there was this place that he would go to and he would be accepted he could go to hogwarts and he would be loved that is where he felt at home you know so it's not important for you to be good at your passion it's important for you to love your passion and it will love you back it will love you unconditionally endlessly irrevocably it's very important for you to find that passion so it doesn't matter so in conclusion it doesn't matter whether you are whether you are ron weasley the dumb wizard or you are hermione the clever witch what's important is that you find your hogwarts the place where you can truly be yourself because that is where magic happens not in this red box thank you